Not marching now in fields of Thrasamine, where Mars did mate the Carthaginians, nor sporting in the dalliance of love in courts of kings where state is overturned, nor in the pomp of proud audacious deeds intends our muse to vaunt his heavenly verse. Only this, gentlemen, we must perform the form of Faustus' fortunes, good or bad. To patient judgments we appeal our plaud and speak for Faustus in his infancy. Now is he born, his parents' base of stock, in Germany within a town called Rhodes. Of riper years to Wittenberg he went, whereas his kinsmen chiefly brought him up. So soon he profits in divinity the fruitful plot of scholarism graced, that shortly he was graced with doctor's name, excelling all whose sweet delight disputes in heavenly matters of theology. Till swollen with cunning of a self-conceit, his waxen wings did mount above his reach, and melting, heavens conspired his overthrow. For falling to a devilish exercise, and glutted now with learning's golden gifts, he surfeits upon cursed necromancy. Nothing so sweet as magic is to him, which he prefers before his chiefest bliss. And this, the man, that in his study sits. Settle thy studies, Faustus, and begin to sound the depth of that thou wilt profess. Having commenced, be a divine and show. Is to dispute well logic's chiefest end? Affords this art no greater miracle? Then read no more. Thou hast attained the end. A greater subject fitteth Faustus' wit. Be a physician, Faustus. Heap up gold and be eternized for some wondrous cure. The end of physic is our body's health. Why, Faustus, hast thou not attained that end? Is not thy common talk sound aphorisms? Are not thy bills hung up as monuments whereby whole cities have escaped the plague and thousand desperate maladies been eased? Yet art thou still but Faustus and a man. Wouldst thou make men to live eternally, or being dead, raise them to life again? Then this profession were to be esteemed. Physic, farewell. Where is Justinian? A pretty case of paltry legacies. His study fits a mercenary drudge who aims at nothing but external trash. Too servile and illiberal for me. When all is done, divinity is best. Jerome's Bible, Faustus, view it well. Stipendium peccati mors est. Ha, ah, stipendium. The reward of sin is death. That's hard. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and there's no truth in us. Why then, belike, we must sin, and so consequently die. Aye, we must die an everlasting death. What doctrine call you this? Que sera sera. What will be, shall be. Divinity, adieu. These metaphysics of magicians and necromantic books are heavenly. Lines, circles, scenes, letters, and characters. Aye, these are those that Faustus most desires. Oh, what a world of profit and delight, of power, of honor, of omnipotence is promised to the studious artisan. All things that move between the quiet poles shall be at my command. Emperors and kings are but obeyed in their several provinces, nor can they raise the wind or rend the clouds. But his dominion that exceeds in this stretcheth as far as doth the mind of man. A sound magician is a mighty god. Here, Faustus, try thy brains to gain a deity. O oh, Faustus, lay that damned book aside, and gaze not upon it, lest it tempt thy soul, and heap God's heavy wrath upon thy head. Read. 
Read the scriptures. That is blasphemy. Go forward, Faustus, in that famous art wherein all nature's treasure is contained. Be thou on earth as Jove is in the sky, lord and commander of these elements. How am I glutted with conceit of this? Shall I make spirits fetch me what I please, resolve me of all ambiguities, perform what desperate enterprise I will? I'll have them fly to India for gold, ransack the ocean for orient pearl, and search all corners of the newfound world for pleasant fruits and princely delicates. I'll have them read me strange philosophy and tell the secrets of all foreign kings. I'll have them wall all Germany with brass and make swift Rhine circle fair Wittenberg. Oh, this cheers my soul. For ere I sleep, I'll try what I can do. This night I'll conjure, though I die therefore. Now that the gloomy shadow of the earth, longing to view Orion's drizzling look, leaps from the Antarctic world unto the sky and dims the welkin with her pitchy breath, Faustus, begin thine incantations and try if devils will obey thy hest, seeing thou hast prayed and sacrificed to them. Within this circle is Jehovah's name, forward and backward anagrammatized, the abbreviated names of holy saints, figures of every adjunct to the heavens, and characters of signs and erring stars by which the spirits are enforced to rise. Then fear not, Faustus, but be resolute, and try the uttermost magic can perform. Sint mihi dei acherontis propiti, valeat numen triplex Jehovah, ignei airei aquatani spiritus salvete, orientis princeps belzibub, inferni ardentis monarca, Et demogorgon, propitiamus suos, utapariat, et surgat mephistophilis. Quintum moraris per Jehovam, gehenam, et consecratam aquam, quam nunc spargo, signumque crucis quad nunc facio, et per vota nostra, Ipse nunc surgat nobis dicatus mephistophilis. Ah! I charge thee to return and change thy shape. Thou art too ugly to attend on me. Go and return an old Franciscan friar. That holy shape becomes a devil best. See, there's virtue in my heavenly words. Who would not be proficient in this art? How pliant is this Mephistopheles, full of obedience and humility. Such is the force of magic and my spells. Now, Faustus, thou art conjurer laureate that canst command great Mephistopheles. Now, Faustus, what wouldst thou have me to do? I charge thee, wait upon me whilst I live, to do whatever Faustus shall command, be it to make the moon drop from her sphere, or the ocean to overwhelm the world. I am a servant to great Lucifer, and may not follow thee without his leave. No more than he commands must we perform. Did not he charge thee to appear to me? No. I came hither of mine own accord. Did not my conjuring speeches raise thee? Speak. That was the cause, but yet per accidents. For when we hear one rack the name of God, abjure the scriptures and his saviour Christ, we fly in hope to get his glorious soul. 
nor will we come unless he use such means whereby he is in danger to be damned. Therefore, the shortest cut for conjuring is stoutly to abjure the Trinity and pray devoutly to the Prince of Hell. So Faustus hath already done, and holds this principle. There is no chief but only Beelzebub, to whom Faustus doth dedicate himself. This word damnation terrifies not him, for he confounds hell in Elysium. But leaving these vain trifles of men's souls, tell me, what is that Lucifer thy lord? Arch-regent and commander of all spirits. Was not that Lucifer an angel once? Yes, Faustus, and most dearly loved of God. How comes it then that he is prince of devils? Oh, by aspiring pride and insolence, for which God threw him from the face of heaven. And what are you that live with Lucifer? Unhappy spirits that fell with Lucifer, conspired against our God with Lucifer, and are forever damned with Lucifer. Where are you damned? In hell. How comes it then that thou art out of hell? Why, this is hell, nor am I out of it. Thinkst thou that I who saw the face of God and tasted the eternal joys of heaven am not tormented with ten thousand hells and being deprived of everlasting bliss? Oh, Faustus, leave these frivolous demands which strike a terror to my fainting soul. What? Is great Mephistopheles so passionate for being deprived of the joys of heaven? Learn thou of Faustus' manly fortitude, and scorn those joys thou never shalt possess. Go, bear these tidings to great Lucifer. Seeing Faustus hath incurred eternal death by desperate thoughts against Jove's deity, say he surrenders up to him his soul, so he will spare him four and twenty years, letting him live in all voluptuousness, having thee ever to attend on me. Give me whatsoever I shall ask, to tell me whatsoever I demand, to slay mine enemies and aid my friends, and always be obedient to my will. Go and return to mighty Lucifer and meet me in my study at midnight, and then resolve me of thy master's mind. I will, Faustus. Sweet Faustus, leave that execrable art. Contrition, prayer, repentance, what of them? Oh, they are means to bring thee into heaven. Rather illusions, fruits of lunacy, that makes men foolish that do trust them most. Sweet Faustus, think of heaven and heavenly things. No, Faustus, think of honor and of wealth. Of wealth? Why, the scenery of Emden shall be mine. When Mephistopheles shall stand by me, what god can hurt thee? Faustus, thou art safe. Cast no more doubts. Come, Mephistopheles, and bring glad tidings from great Lucifer. It's not midnight. Come, Mephistopheles. Now, tell me, what says Lucifer thy lord? That I shall wait on Faustus whilst he lives, so he will buy my service with his soul. Already Faustus hath hazarded that for thee. But Faustus, thou must bequeath it solemnly and write a deed of gift with thine own blood. For that security craves, great Lucifer. If thou deny it, I'll back to hell. Stay, Mephistopheles. And tell me, what good will my soul do thy lord? Enlarge his kingdom. Is that the reason why he tempts us thus? In company, the miserable find solace. Why? Have you any pain that tortures others? As great as have the human souls of men. But tell me, Faustus, shall I have thy soul? And I will be thy slave, and wait on thee, and give thee more than thou hast wit to ask. Aye, Mephistopheles, I give it thee. Then, Faustus, stab thine arm courageously, and bind thy soul that at some certain day, great Lucifer may claim it as his own, and then be thou as great as Lucifer. You know, Mephistopheles, for love of thee, I cut mine arm, and with my proper blood assure my soul to be great Lucifer's, chief lord and regent of perpetual night. View here the blood that trickles from my arm, and let it be propitious for my wish. But Faustus, thou must write it in manner of a deed of gift. Aye, so I will. But Mephistopheles, my blood congeals and I can write no more. I'll fetch the fire to dissolve it straight. What might the staying of my blood portend? Is it unwilling I should write this bill? 
By streams it not that I may write afresh. Faustus gives to thee his soul. Ah, there it's dead. Why shouldst thou not? Is not thy soul thine own? Then write again. Faustus gives to thee his soul. Here's fire. Come, Faustus, set it on. So now the blood begins to clear again. Now I will make an end immediately. Oh, what will I do to obtain a soul? Consummatum est. The bill is ended, and Faustus hath bequeathed his soul to Lucifer. But what is this inscription on my arm? Homo fuge. Whither should I fly? If unto God, he'll throw me down to hell. My senses are deceived. Here's nothing writ. I see it plain. Here in this place is writ. Homo fuge. I'll fetch him somewhat to delight his mind. Speak, Mephistopheles. What means this show? Nothing, Faustus, but to delight thy mind with all and to show thee what magic can perform. But may I raise up spirits when I please? Aye, Faustus, and do greater things than these. And there's enough for a thousand souls. Here, Mephistopheles, receive this scroll, a deed of gift of body and of soul, but yet conditionally that thou perform all articles prescribed between us both. Faustus, I swear by hell and Lucifer to effect all promises between us made. Speak, Faustus. You deliver this as your deed? I take it, and the devil give thee good aunt. Now, Faustus, ask what thou wilt. First will I question thee about hell. Tell me, where is the place that men call hell? Under the heavens. Aye, but where about? Within the bowels of these elements, where we are tortured and remain forever. Hell hath no limits, nor is circumscribed in one self place, for where we are is hell. And where hell is, there must we ever be. And to conclude, when all the world dissolves, and every creature shall be purified, all places shall be hell that is not heaven. Come, I think hell's a fable. I think so still, till experience change thy mind. Why? Thinkst thou then that Faustus shall be damned? I of necessity, for here's the scroll wherein thou hast given thy soul to Lucifer. I and body too. But what of that? Thinkst thou that Faustus is so fond to imagine that after this life there is any pain? Tush, those are trifles and mere old wives' tales. But Faustus, I am an instance to prove the contrary, for I am damned and am now in hell. How? Now in hell? Nay, and this be hell, I'll willingly be damned here. What? Walking, disputing? Ah. But leaving this off, let me have a wife, the fairest maid in Germany, for I am wanton and lascivious and cannot live without a wife. How? A wife? I pray thee, Faustus, talk not of a wife. Nay, sweet Mephistopheles, fetch me one, for I will have one. Well, thou wilt have one. Sit there till I come. I'll fetch thee a wife in the devil's name. <laughs> Tell me, Faustus, how dost thou like thy wife? A plague on her for a hot whore. Tut, Faustus, marriage is but a ceremonial toy. And if thou lovest me, think no more of it. I'll cull thee out the fairest courtesans and bring them every morning to thy bed. She whom thine eye shall like, thy heart shall have. Be she as chaste as was Penelope and as wise as Saber or as beautiful as was bright Lucifer before his fall. Here, take this book, peruse it thoroughly. The iterating of these lines brings gold. The framing of this circle on the ground brings whirlwinds, tempests, thunder, and lightning. Pronounce this thrice devoutly to thyself, and men in armor shall appear to thee, ready to execute what thou desirest. Thanks, Mephistopheles. Yet fain would I have a book wherein I might behold all spells and incantations, that I might raise up spirits when I please. Here they are, in this book. Now would I have a book where I might see all characters and planets of the heavens, 
that I might know their motions and dispositions. Here they are, too. When I behold the heavens, then I repent. Why, Faustus, thinkst thou heaven is such a glorious thing? I tell thee it is not half so fair as thou, or any man that breathes on earth. How proves thou that? It was made for man. Therefore is man more excellent. If it were made for man, it was made for me. Faustus, repent. Yet God will pity thee. Thou art a spirit. God cannot pity thee. Who buzzeth in my ears? I am a spirit. Be I a devil, yet God may pity me. Aye, God will pity me if I repent. Aye, but Faustus never shall repent. My heart's so hardened, I cannot repent. Scarce can I name salvation, faith, or heaven, but fearful echoes thunder in mine ears. Faustus, thou art damned. Tell me, who made the world? I will not. Sweet Mephistopheles, tell me. Move me not, for I will not tell thee. Villain, have I not bound thee to tell me anything? Aye, that is not against our kingdom. But this is. Think thou on hell, Faustus, for thou art damned. Think, Faustus, upon gods that made the world. Remember this! I go, accursed spirit, to ugly hell. Tis thou hast damned this dressed Faustus' soul. He's not too late. Too late. Never too late, if Faustus can repent. If thou repent, devil shall tear thee in pieces. Repent, and they shall never raise thy skin. Oh, Christ, my Savior, seek to save this dressed Faustus' soul. <laughs> Christ cannot save thy soul, for he is just. There's none but I have interest in the same. Oh. Oh. Who art thou that looks so terrible? I am Lucifer, and this is my companion prince in hell. Oh, Faustus, they are come to fetch away thy soul. We come to tell thee thou dost injure us. Thou talkst of Christ contrary to thy promise. Thou shouldst not think of God. Think of the devil and of his damn too. Nor will I henceforth pardon me in this. And Faustus vows never to look to heaven, never to name God, or to pray to him, to burn his scriptures, slay his ministers, and make my spirits pull his churches down. Do so, and we will highly gratify thee. <laughs> Faustus, we are come from hell to show thee some pastime. Sit down, and thou shalt see all the seven deadly sins appear in their proper shapes. That sight will be as pleasing unto me as paradise was to Adam the first day of his creation. Talk not of paradise nor creation, but mark this show. Talk of the devil and nothing else. Come, away! Ah. <laughs> now, Faustus, examine them of their several names and dispositions. What art thou the first? I am pride. I disdain to have any parents. I am like to Ovid's flea. I can creep into every corner of a wench. Sometimes, like a periwig, I sit upon her brow. Or like a fan of feathers, I kiss her lips. Oh, indeed I do. What do I not? Oh, but fie, what a scent is here. I'll not speak another word, except the ground were perfumed and covered with cloth of Arras. What art thou, the second? I am covetousness, begotten of an old churl in an old leathern bag. And might I have my wish, I would desire that this house and all the people in it were turned to gold, that I might lock you up in my good chest. Ah, my sweet gold. What art thou, the third? I am wrath. I have neither father nor mother. I leapt out of a lion's mouth when I was scarce half an hour old, and ever since I have run up and down the world with this case of rapiers, wounding myself when I had nobody to fight with all. I was born in hell, and look to it, for some of you shall be my father. What art thou, the fourth? I am envy, begotten of a chimney sweeper and an oyster wife. I cannot read, therefore wish all books were burnt. I am lean with seeing others eat. Oh, that there would come a famine through all the world, that all might die. But I live all alone. Then, 
thou should see how fat I would be. But must thou sit to thy stand? Come down with a vengeance. Away, envious rascal. What art thou, the fifth? <sighs> Who, I, sir? I am gluttony. My parents are all dead, and the devil a penny they've left me, but uh, they are pension. And that is thirty meals a day and ten bevers, a small trifle to suffice nature. Oh, I come of royal parentage. My grandfather was a gammon of bacon. My grandmother a hogshead of claret wine. My godfathers were these, Peter Pickle Herring and Martin Martelmas Beer. Oh, but my godmother, she was a jolly gentlewoman and well-beloved in every good town and city. Her name was Mistress Marjorie March Beer. Now, Faustus, thou hast heard of all my progeny who will bid me to supper. No, I'll see thee hanged. Thou'lt eat up all my victuals. And the devil choke thee. Choke thyself, glutton. <laughs> what thou, the sixth? Oh, I am sloth. I was begotten on a sunny bank where I've lain ever since. And you've done me great injury to bring me from thence. Oh, let me be carried thither again by gluttony and lechery. Oh, I'll not speak another word for a king's ransom. What are you, Mistress Minx, the seventh and last? Who, I, sir? <gasps> I am one that loves an inch of raw mutton better than an ell of fried stuffish. Mm, and the first letter of my name begins with lechery. Away! To hell! To hell! <laughs> now, Faustus, how dost thou like this? Oh, this feeds my soul. Dad, Faustus in hell is all manner of delight. Oh, might I see hell and return again. How happy were I then. Now thou shalt. I will send for thee at midnight. In the meantime, take this book. Peruse it thoroughly, and thou shalt turn thyself into what shape thou wilt. Great thanks, mighty Lucifer. This will I keep as cherry as my life. Farewell, Faustus, and think on the devil. Farewell. Great Lucifer. Come, Mephistopheles. Learned Faustus, to know the secrets of astronomy graven in the book of Jove's high firmament, did mount himself to scale Olympus' top, being seated in a chariot burning bright, drawn by the strength of yoky dragon's necks. He now is gone to prove cosmography, and, as I guess, will first arrive at Rome to see the Pope and manner of his court and take some part of Holy Peter's feast that to this day is highly solemnized. Hast thou, as erst I did command, conducted me within the walls of Rome? Faustus, I have, and because we will not be unprovided, I have taken up His Holiness' privy chamber for our use. I hope His Holiness will bid us welcome. Tat is no matter, man. We'll be bold with his good cheer. Now by the kingdoms of infernal rule, of Styx, of Acheron, and the fiery lake of ever-burning Phlegathon, I swear that I do long to see the monuments and situation of bright splendid Rome. Come, therefore, let's away. Nay, Faustus, stay. I know you'd fain see the Pope and take some part of Holy Peter's feast, where thou shalt see a troop of bald-pate friars, whose summum bonum is in belly cheer. Well, I'm content to compass them some sport and by their folly make us merriment. Then charm me, Mephistopheles, that I may be invisible to do what I please, unseen of any whilst I stay in Rome. So! Faustus, now do what thou wilt. Thou shalt not be discerned. My lord of Lorraine, Will please you draw near. Fall to the devil choke you. How oh, now? Oh, Who's that which speak? Friars, look about. Oh, Here's nobody would like your holiness. My lord, here is a dainty dish was sent me from the Bishop of Milan. I thank you, sir. <laughs> How now? Who's that which snatched the meat from me? Will no man look? My lord, 
This dish was sent me from the Cardinal of Florence. You say true? I'll head once again. <laughs> My lord, I'll drink to your grace. I'll pledge your grace. My lord, it may be some ghost newly crept out of purgatory. Come to beg a pardon of your holiness. Yes, maybe so. Friars, prepare a dirge to lay the fury of this ghost. Come on, Mephistopheles. What do we do? <laughs> Nay, I know not. We shall be cursed with bell, book, and candle. Oh, bell, book, and candle, candle, book, and bell, forward and backward to curse Faustus to hell. <laughs> Anon you shall hear a hog grunt, a calf bleat, and an ass bray, because it is St. Peter's holiday. Come, brethren, let's about our business with good devotion. Cursed be he that Ooh. stole away his holiness meat from the table. How now? Cursed be he that struck his holiness a blow on the face. Cursed be he that took fresh and yellow a blow on the face. Cursed be he that disturbed our holy church. When Faustus had with pleasure tamed the view of rarest things and royal courts of kings, he stayed his course and so returned home where such as bear his absence but with grief, I mean his friends and nearest companions, did gratulate his safety with kind words, and in their conference of what befell, touching his journey through the world and air, they put forth questions of astrology, which Faustus answered with such learned skill as they admired and wondered at his wit. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, Master Doctor, this merriment hath much pleased me. My gracious Lord, I'm glad it contents you so well. But it may be, Madam, you take no delight in this. I've heard that great-bellied women do long for some dainties or other. What is it, Madam? Tell me and you shall have it. Thanks, good Master Doctor. And for I see your courteous intent to pleasure me, I will not hide from you the thing my heart desires. Were it now summer as it is January in the dead time of winter, I would desire no better meat than a dish of ripe grapes. <laughs> <laughs> Alas, madam, that's nothing. Mephistopheles, be gone. Were it a greater thing than this, so it would content you, you should have it. <gasps> Here they be, madam. Will it please you taste on them? Believe me, Master Doctor, they be the best grapes that e'er I tasted in my life before. I am glad they content you so, Madam. <laughs> Come, Madam, let us in. For you must well reward this learned man for the great kindness he has showed to you. And so I will, my Lord. And whilst I live, rest beholding for this courtesy. <laughs> I humbly thank your grace. Come, Master Doctor, follow us and receive your reward. <laughs> Now is his fame spread forth in every land. Amongst the rest, the emperor is one, Carolus the Fifth, at whose palace now Faustus is feasted amongst his noblemen. Master Dr. Faustus, I have heard strange report of thy knowledge in the black arts, how that none in my empire nor in the whole world can compare with thee for the rare effects of magic. They say thou hast a familiar spirit by whom thou canst accomplish uh, what thou list. This, therefore, is my request, that thou let me see some proof of thy skill, that mine eyes may be witnesses to confirm what mine ears have heard reported. And here I swear to thee by the honor of mine imperial crown that whatever thou doest, Thou shalt be no ways prejudiced or endamaged. I faith, he looks much like a conjurer. My gracious sovereign, though I must confess myself far inferior to the report men have published, and nothing answerable to the honor of your imperial majesty, yet for that love and duty binds me thereunto, I am content to do whatsoever your majesty shall command me. 
Then, Dr. Faustus, mark what I shall say. As I was sometimes solitary set within my closet, sundry thoughts arose about the honor of my ancestors, uh, how they had won by prowess such exploits, uh, got such riches, subdued so many kingdoms as we that do succeed, or they that shall hereafter possess our throne, shall, I fear me, ne'er attain to that degree of high renown and great authority. Amongst which kings is Alexander the Great, chief spectacle of the world's preeminence, the bright shining of whose glorious acts lightens the world with his reflecting beams. As when I heard but mention made of him, it grieves my soul, I never saw the man. If therefore thou, by cunning of thy art, canst raise this man from hollow vaults below, where lies entombed this famous conqueror, and bring with him his beauteous paramour, both in their right shapes, gesture, and attire they used to wear during their time of life, thou shalt both satisfy my just desire and give me cause to praise thee whilst I live. My gracious lord, I am ready to accomplish your request so far forth, as by art and power of my spirit I am able to perform. If faith, that's just nothing at all. But if it like your grace, it is not in my ability to present before your eyes the true substantial bodies of those two deceased princes, which long since are consumed to dust. I marry, Master Doctor, now there's a sign of grace in you when you shall confess the truth. But such spirits as can lively resemble Alexander and his paramour shall appear before your grace in that manner that they best lived in, in their most flourishing estate, which I doubt not shall sufficiently content your imperial majesty. Go to, Master Doctor, let me see them presently. Do you hear, Master Doctor? You bring Alexander and his paramour before the emperor. How then, sir? If faith, that's as true as Diana turned me into a stag. No, sir. But when Actaeon died, he left the horns for you. Mephistopheles, be gone. Nay, and you go to conjuring. I'll be gone. I'll meet with you anon for interrupting me so. Here they are, my gracious lords. Master Doctor, I heard this lady, while she lived, had a wart or mole in her neck. How shall I know whether it be so or not? Your Highness may boldly go and see. Sure, these are no spirits, but the true substantial bodies of those two deceased princes. Will please your highness now to send for that knight that was so pleasant with me here of late. One of you call him forth. <laughs> How now, Sir Knight? Why, I had thought thou hadst been a bachelor. But now I see thou hast a wife that not only gives thee horns, but makes thee wear them. <laughs> Feel on thy head. Thou goddammit wretch and execrable dog bred in the concave of some monstrous rock, how darest thou thus abuse a gentleman? Villain, I say, undo what thou hast done. Oh, not so oh. fast, sir. There's no haste. But good, are you remembered how you crossed me in my conference with the Emperor? I think I have met with you for it. Good Master Doctor, at my entreaty, release him. He hath done penance sufficient. My gracious Lord, not so much for the injury he offered me here in your presence, as to delight you with some mirth, hath Faustus worthily requited this injurious knight. Which being all I desire, I am content to release him of his horns. And, Sir Knight, hereafter speak well of scholars. Mephistopheles, transform him straight. Oh. Now, my good lord, having done my duty, I humbly take my leave. Farewell, Master Doctor. Yet, ere you go, expect from me a bounteous reward. Now, Mephistopheles, the restless course that time doth run with calm and silent foot 
shortening my days and thread of vital life calls for the payment of my latest years. Therefore, sweet Mephistopheles, let us make haste to Wittenberg. I think my master means to die shortly, for he hath given me all his goods. And yet, methinks, if the death were near, he would not banquet and carouse and swill amongst the students, as even now he doth, who are at supper with such belly cheer as Wagner ne'er beheld in all his life. See where they come? Belike, the feast is ended. Master Dr. Faustus, since our conference about fair ladies, which was the beautifulest in all the world, we have determined with ourselves that Helen of Greece was the admirablest lady that ever lived. Therefore, Master Doctor, if you will do us that favor as to let us see that peerless dame of Greece, whom all the world admires for majesty, we should think ourselves much beholding unto you. Gentlemen, for that I know your friendship is unfeigned, and Foster's custom is not to deny the just requests of those that wish him well. You shall behold that peerless dame of Greece. No other ways for pomp and majesty than when Sir Paris crossed the seas with her and brought the spoils to rich Dardania. Be silent then, for danger is in words. Since we have seen the pride of nature's works, an only paragon of excellence, let us depart. And for this glorious deed, happy and blessed be Faustus evermore. Gentlemen, farewell. The same I wish to you. Where art thou, Faustus? Wretch, what hast thou done? Damned art thou, Faustus, damned. Despair and die. Hell calls for right, and with a roaring voice says, Faustus, come, thine hour is almost come. I do repent, and yet I do despair. Hell strives with grace for conquest in my breast. What shall I do? To shun the snares of death. Thou traitor Faustus, I arrest thy soul for disobedience to my sovereign lord. Revolt and I'll in piecemeal tear thy flesh. Sweet Mephistopheles, entreat thy lord to pardon my unjust presumption, and with my blood again I will confirm my former vow I made to Lucifer. Do it then quickly with unfeigned heart, lest greater danger do attend thy drift. One thing, good servant, let me crave of thee to glut the longing of my heart's desire that I might have unto my paramour that heavenly Helen which I saw of late, whose sweet embracings may extinguish clean these thoughts that do dissuade me from my vow and keep mine oath I made to Lucifer. Faustus, this and what else thou shalt desire shall be performed in twinkling of an eye. <laughs> Was this the face that launched a thousand ships and burnt the topless towers of Ilium? Sweet Helen, make me immortal with a kiss. Oh, her lips suck forth my soul. See where it flies. Come, Helen. Come. Give me my soul again. Here will I dwell, for heaven is in these lips, and all is dross that is not Helen. I will be Paris, and for love of thee, instead of Troy shall Wittenberg be sacked. 
And I will combat with weak Menelaus, and wear thy colors on my plumed crest. Yea, I will wound Achilles in the heel, and then return to Helen for a kiss. Oh, thou art fairer than the evening air, clad in the beauty of a thousand stars. Brighter art thou than flaming Jupiter when he appeared to hapless Semele, more lovely than the monarch of the sky in wanton Arethusa's azure dance. And none but thou shalt be my paramour. Ah, gentlemen, what ails Faustus? Ah, oh, my sweet chamber fellow, had I lived with thee, then had I lived still. But now I die eternally. Look, comes he not? Comes he not? What means Faustus? Like he's grown into some sickness by being over solitary. Well, if it be so, we'll have physicians to cure him. Tis but a surfeit. Never fear, man. A uh, surfeit of deadly sin that hath damned both body and soul. Yet, Faustus, look up to heaven. Remember, God's mercies are infinite. But Faustus' offenses can never be pardoned. The serpent that tempted Eve may be saved, but not Faustus. Ah, gentlemen, hear me with patience and tremble not at my speeches. Though my heart pants and quivers to remember that I have been a student here these thirty years, Oh, would that I had never seen Wittenberg, never read book. And what wonders I have done, all Germany can witness, yea, all the world. For which Faustus hath lost both Germany and the world. Ah, yea, heaven itself, heaven the seat of God, the throne of the blessed, the kingdom of joy, and must remain in hell forever. Hell. Sweet friends, what shall become of Faustus being in hell forever? Yet Faustus call on God. On God, whom Faustus hath abjured? On God, whom Faustus hath blasphemed? Oh, my God, I would weep, but the devil draws in my tears. Gush forth blood instead of tears. Yea, life and soul. Ah, oh, he stays my tongue. I would lift up my hands, but see, they hold them. They hold them. Who, oh, Faustus? Lucifer and Mephistopheles. Ah, gentlemen, I gave them my soul for my cunning. God, God forbid. forbid. God forbid it indeed, but Faustus hath done it. For vain pleasure of twenty-four years hath Faustus lost eternal joy and felicity. I writ them a bill with mine own blood. The date is expired. The time will come. And he will fetch me. Why did not Faustus tell us of this before, that divines might have prayed for thee? Oft have I thought to have done so. But the devil threatened to tear me in pieces if I named God. To fetch both body and soul if I once gave ear to divinity. And now, it is too late. Gentlemen, away, lest you perish with me. Oh, what shall we do to save Faustus? Talk not of me. But save yourselves and depart. God will strengthen me. I will stay with Faustus. Oh, tempt not God, sweet friend, but let us into the next room and there pray for him. Aye, pray for me. Pray for me. And what noise soever ye hear, come not unto me, for nothing can rescue me. Pray thou, and we will pray that God may have mercy upon thee. Gentlemen, farewell. If I live till morning, I'll visit you. If not, Faustus is gone to hell. Faustus, farewell. Ah, Faustus. Now hast thou but one bare hour to live, and then thou must be. Stand still, you ever-moving spheres of heaven. The time may cease and midnight never come. 
Fear nature's eye. Rise, rise again, and make perpetual day. Or let this hour be but a year, a month, a week, a natural day, that Faustus may repent and save his soul. Oh, lente, lente, curite noctis equi. Stars move still. Time runs. The clock will strike. The devil will come, and Faustus must be damned. Oh, I leap up to my God. Who pulls me down? See, see where Christ's blood streams in the firmament. One drop would save my soul. Half a drop. Ah, my Christ. Err and not my heart for naming of my Christ. Yet will I call on him. Oh, spare me, Lucifer. Where is it now? Tis gone, and see where God stretcheth out his arm and bends his awful brows. Mountain and hills, come, come and fall on me and hide me from the heavy wrath of God. No, no. Then will I headlong run into the earth. Earth, gape! Oh, no, it will not harbor me. You stars that reigned at my nativity, whose influence hath allotted death and hell, now draw Faustus like a foggy mist into the entrails of yon laboring cloud, that when you vomit forth into the air, my limbs may issue from your smoky mouths, so that my soul may but ascend to heaven. Ah! Ah, half the hour is past. It will all be past anon. Oh, God, if thou wilt not have mercy on my soul, yet for Christ's sake, whose blood hath ransomed me, impose some end to my incessant pain. Let Faustus live in hell a thousand years, a hundred thousand, and at last be saved. Oh. Oh, no end is limited to damned souls. Why wert thou not a creature wanting soul? Or oh, why is this immortal that thou hast? Ah, Pythagoras is met him psychosis. Were that true, this soul should fly from me, and I be changed into some brutish beast. All beasts are happy, for when they die, their souls are soon dissolved in elements, but mine must live still to be plagued in hell. Cast me the parents that engendered me. No, Faustus, curse thyself. Curse Lucifer that hath deprived thee of the joys of heaven. Oh, it strikes. It strikes. Now, body turned to air. Or Lucifer will bear thee quick to hell. Or soul be changed into little water drops and fall into the ocean near be found. My God, my God, look not so fierce on me. Adders and serpents, let me breathe a while. Ugly hell, gape not. Come not, Lucifer. I'll burn my books. Ah, baby stuff it is. Cut is the branch that might have grown full straight. And burned is Apollo's laurel bough that sometimes grew within this learned man. Faustus is gone. Regard his hellish fall, whose fiendful fortune may exhort the wise only to wonder at unlawful things. Who 
whose deepness doth entice such forward wits to practice more than heavenly power. <laughs>